God's needs. When we supply our faith with what it needs, we secure our future, immediate and distant. When we supply, watch this, when we, when we, when we do something with the faith that we have, we secure our future, immediate and distant, with the assurance of God's plan at work, power and operation, and presence in the midst of our lives. Isn't that good? Remember, God never responds to your need. What does he respond to, y'all? I got a good class. God never responds to your need. What does it respond to, you all? I'll say it again. God never responds to your need. What does he respond to? Now we can stop getting mad at God when things don't go the way you had planned them to go. Now we can stop getting mad at God when things don't work out the way you wanted them to work. Because God does not respond to your need. If that's the case, then we don't serve a good God at all because there are a whole bunch of needs in this earth. And if God responded to need, then something is wrong with the God that we all serve. But God says, I don't respond to need. I respond to faith. And then how am I supposed to respond to faith? God, watch this. If I don't have faith, all of us have been given the measure of faith. And then all of us have been given something called the word, which is the book of faith. And so we all have it. I don't believe everything it says. Well, then you just put down your faith. That's up to you. He says, this day I give you a choice to choose between life or death. He says, I pray that you choose life. It's up to you. To, it, look, it's up to you to believe what you want to believe, do what you want to do. But it's up to me now to, well, I got your attention to try to help you to understand that you can literally take your life from one place to the next on purpose. And that's what it's designed to do. So remember, God never responds to your need. He only responds to your faith. So it stands to reason that we must stop trying to take care of our needs. Oh, I can't say that enough. Stop trying to take care of your needs. 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 Need. I've lived long enough to know this one good. The more I keep trying to take care of my needs, another one pops up. The more I oh, finally got that done then something else is going on over there. Is anybody in here with me? Do I got any men in here? You ever try to get something going and all of a sudden something else pops up? As Soon as I get my marriage going, now the kids is doing something stupid. As Soon as the kids start doing something stupid, then something's going on at the work. As Soon as I get my work situation going, then back to the marriage again because I ain't home enough. As Soon as I get that going, then somebody, you know, my friendships are going. I mean, something is always trying to come and attack us. Have you ever noticed that? So then this notion of living in this life and nothing ever happening is a fallacy. It's never going to happen. And let me say this. If nothing is going on in your life, then you're not living by faith. Faith does not, watch this, faith does not stop things coming and flowing. Can I flow? Faith does not stop stuff coming at you, but it does shield you from ridiculous things. Yeah, it doesn't stop anything from, as a matter of fact, it turns up the heat on things coming at you, but it, it, it is a clear shield from all of that stuff that is going on in your life. So we must stop trying to take care of our needs and start taking care of our faith. So today, stop trying to take care of your needs. Tap your neighbor and say, stop trying to take care of your needs. Stop trying to take care of your needs. That should be a relief right there. That's, that's a relief. No, seriously, I'm trying to tell you. That should be a relief. I don't get it, Pastor. I don't understand that. Okay, because the bills got to still get paid. Well, listen to me. If you are living or dead, it, something's still got to happen. So watch this. You might as well do it the correct way. How do I take care of my faith? Claim the faith that you already have. Open up what God's word says and let it come out of your mouth to build up your faith. When faith begins to come out of your mouth, which is the word of God, revelation comes, which comes ideas on how to take care of the need. I'm getting off script so I can just help y'all. Did y'all did get that? Pastor, what, did, what do you do, Pastor? I, I, I step back and I look at all the many things that I need to do. But I look at God's word and I say, okay, Lord, what does your word say? And it is from God's word, what God, because I already have a measure of faith, I already have, have the measure of faith, then God does something with his word to speak to me in my current situation to give me instructions on how to take care of whatever need may be before me. Sometimes he may say, he may say, leave that alone. Leave that alone. God, them folks is on me like right now. Leave it alone. I don't get it. I know. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean to your own understanding. What are we doing this by? By faith. 
faith is what? The substance of things that are not seen. Amen. The substance of what? What is it? What's faith? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Evidence of things not seen. You already know that, right? I'm trying to get this point out. <laughs> so then, if this is faith and I'm not going to actually see it from my eye, then I'm going to have to trust when God gives me something. I read his word. I get revelation. And I begin to do it. Guess what I'm doing it by? Is that good? That's living, as the Bible says, yet I walk by faith. That's walking by faith. You cannot say that you walk, watch this, by faith. You cannot say you walk by faith and you have no word. When you say you walk by faith, that means there must be word associated with it. Now this is where people are like, oh, see, now there you, well then I don't know what to say for you, but you keep on doing what you're doing then if that's what you need to do. But if you want to walk by faith, if you want to walk by, if you want to walk by faith, that means you must walk by what God's word says. Amen. All right. All right. All right. Earlier, I read a scripture because we talked about faith needs, what, what faith needs. And one of the things um, I have, the first point I have today is faith needs work. Somebody say faith needs work. Faith needs what? What does faith need? Yeah. So I know the Bible, if you're uh, any level of a Bible reader, the Bible talks about that, that you should not be in works to try to establish your faith. Not going to get into that. Come to Bible study and we'll go over that. But faith needs works. What I'm going to do, I'm going to skip down to verse 25. Can I do that? As we look in James 2, 25, it says, likewise, was not Rahab the harlot also justified by works? Was she, watch this, was she not justified by what? When she received the messengers and sent them out another way. Remember I asked you to say another way? Say it again, somebody say another way. It says, the problem you solve determines the reward you receive. Here again, the problem you solve, are you listening, determines the reward you receive. So you have to ask yourself, what is the reward I want to receive? Then you have to go into the space of within what level of problem that am I going or am I willing to go into solve? So what, 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 what does faith require? It requires work. It requires work. So again, I'll say the problem you solve determines the what? Come on, wake up, wake up. The problem you solve determines the what? The problem you solve determines the what? You know what I love about this? I don't have to go and lick nobody's rear end for nothing. So I'll preach over here, so is it, uh, I, I, don't, I don't have to, I don't have to. When I even look at now some of the positions that God puts me in, I didn't have to do anything really except walk by faith. I didn't have to do anything except walk by faith, amen. You know, and, th and there's days when I went and y'all know what I'm talking about. Hey, Bob, how you doing? And hey, uh, how, you got to be all up in the mix. First lady hates that. She'd be like, Darren, shut up with all that. If God is going to have you in a position, you let God do it. And for years, God has done that. Yeah, why? Because he here's the thing. What is the problem? Am I willing to solve it? If I do it, it's going to be by faith. Are you hearing me? So, so, so if I could use an example, Elder Hatchell, he sees a problem that people need to be motivated in what they do. They need to be inspired. He happens to see that. So he goes and he, he goes and he loves to speak to people, but Elder Hatchell's organization skills are not as cool as his wife. <laughs> Dare I to say if they're cool at all. So his wife sees a problem. Because I see my husband has a skill and he loves to motivate and to, to get people going, but he, this, he, he ain't organized, ain't gonna ever happen. So she's behind the scene, never have to be seen, only for people to say, come up to be seen. She didn't ask to be seen. She was there to fix the problem. And the reward, watch this, the reward comes in the way of her husband looking at her probably at night saying, Lord, Thank you, Lord. And he gets up and says, I'm going to do whatever I got to do to take care of her. Yeah. Now, see, I, I'm just trying to talk practical because people think this is all, 
pie in the sky. No, it's, 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 it's almost as simple as that. And I give uh, several de descriptions of, or examples of this, but it's work. It's work. Because by faith, we're going to start a business. But it's work. Are y'all seeing that? Yeah, yeah. A lot of people don't understand that when you're doing work, that work takes faith. Listen to me. You should put more faith in work than you do effort. <laughs> now you, you need to look at me in my face. I am a hard worker, so don't ever get, you know, with, and I, I'm here to dispense much effort and do whatever I got to do. That's one of the first lessons that God had to teach me. I'm going to show you how to do things effortlessly. And when I start receiving things, I was like, well, how do I explain this to myself? I can't, no one can take credit for this except God. I mean, it wasn't about people. It was about God showing me like, God, you're doing this. And guess what I would do? All right, that's good, God. I got this now. I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it, God. And guess what I do? Mess it up by putting what? Effort. Doing what? This is what I think should happen. I got this now, God. I got this now. Mess it up. And then, I say, and then when it messes up and I can't fix it up, all right, Lord, I'm back to repenting. All right, Lord. All right, God. All right, all right, all right. So, okay, Lord, would you help me again? Sure, Darren. Okay. And we're back on, me and God back again. We're rolling. It's popping. And all of a sudden, look at me. Oh, I'm popping. So, see, there you see. And God in the back, like, see, look, look at him. <laughs> Talking to my ministry angels. Look at him. Look at him. There I go again. And it scrubs again. I'm like, what's wrong? Here's a, here I am. What's wrong with me? Why do I go back? Because I feel, watch this, I feel lazy if I'm not doing something. I feel lazy if I'm not at the top. I got to work till I can't, I can't even. I feel lazy. One time God had me get up and sit and just look. I said, oh, I'm so uncomfortable. Oh, this makes no sense. Oh, God, this, is, this can't be you. Then I got to the scripture, be steep. This is faith. And no, I'm God. I start coming up with ideas. I start seeing things differently. I said, oh, I was getting ready to move, but move in the wrong direction, just off a few degrees. When God said, if you could just give me one day and just stop and just let me speak to you, I can, I can shoot you in the right direction. Get up and do exactly what God says. Things that did not work, start popping off working. And people will come and say, wow, that's how you do that. I mean, really, it's like you can't teach it. You can't really, I can't really, I don't know. I mean, I stopped for a moment, right? And then God told me what to do, and then I did it. I think we can't give a class on that, really. You can, but you can't. Because everything is so unique to what God is trying to do for each and every one of us. Are you, are you hearing me? So faith needs what? It needs work. And the problem you solve determines the reward you receive. Amen. What, is, what does faith need? Faith needs patience. We talked about that before, right? Patience is the weapon that forces deception to reveal itself. In Galatians 6 to 9, it says, let us not get tired of doing what is right. For after a while, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we do not get discouraged and give up. That's what people do. They give up. I sit around a lot of times and wait for folks to give up and just get the, and get the scraps from that. You want to do real estate? Wait for somebody to, to give up. And just be there. Amen. Just, let, just wait for somebody to give up. And just be there. Because when they give up, then you can, you can buy low. That's just a little tidbit. Amen. But you got to be patient. You, you can't be like, I got to be rich right now. Can't, it, can't, it don't work like that. It don't work like that. Um, you got to be patient with people around you. And God said, God, help me with my patience. Then God sends you people that, that work your patience. I mean, you're not hearing what I'm saying. We, we were out of the country. And there was a moment, me and First Lady, man, it was like, God, did you send her to work on my patients? She was just on my nerves, just constantly on my nerves, man. I was like, ah, Lee. And I discovered, look, and I was actually doing this message. I was like, oh, you must be working with her for my patients. It happens. And so you can't be going left and going off. And you have to say, God, what is it that you want me to see? Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Because why? I don't want to give up the blessing that is in my life by going off or saying I quit. Tap your neighbor and say, I'm not going to quit with what belongs with me. 
Yeah, I'm not going to quit. I'm going for it. Going all the way. Going all the way. What, what does faith need? Faith needs a problem, an assignment. What do you get up for in the morning? It needs a problem, an assignment. Your assignment on earth is simply the problem God gave you or created you to solve. Your assignment on earth is simply the problem God created you to solve. Meaning this, I'm not talking about problems that you're making, but I'm talking about there's some things that just kind of just seems, seems to be on you. Let me say it and give you an example. I, I, I woke up one day and discovered I was black. I'm talking when I was little, amen? Now, he's not, I don't think he's here, but my brother right underneath me is very light-skinned. And he didn't know that he was black until like we were in elementary school. And everybody kept calling him like, are you white? And they didn't think we had the same parents and all this other kind of thing. The point was is that he didn't know that he was black. And I had to tell him, we were like first grade. I said, you black? What are you talking about? Well, they keep saying that we don't got the same mama and daddy. I'm like, well, we do. We didn't know, we, we didn't know, it's, it's just, but, but watch this. As we start to grow older, we discovered that it was a problem with me being darker skinned. People begin, to, and, and this is the reality, people treat you differently. Like, me and my wife had this conversation, it's like, it's different from you, a light skinned woman with all these light eyes walking into place, from a black bald head man walking in saying, you know, give me a piece of steak or whatever, you know, it, it's a different thing. See, people get uncomfortable when you talk about stuff like this. But it's the reality. It's real. If you're not, we, we judge each other in our in the own black community about our, our skin color. In our own community, we were taught to do that years ago. So don't get uncomfortable. Just listen to what I'm saying. Oh, it, it, you know, you got thick lips and you got kinky hair. You're made to not love yourself. So you try to change yourself. Lord, help me. <laughs> you try to change yourself to look like something that you're not. When God didn't make a mistake with you. Amen. So I came to understand that I had to learn how to love myself. I became a fan of Darren Barron a long time ago. And let me tell you, that thing worked. Amen. And so if my wife is pretty, I pulled her because I love me. And, and understand this. It wasn't like she was the only one I could find. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Why? Because I learned to love me. I would watch people that would be in the world far more attractive, and they'd be saying, how do you do it? And I would, my, my answer, because I'm a player. <laughs> that would be my answer, but that's not the answer. That's not the answer. That's shallow. That's because you don't know. No, the answer is because I learned to love me. I learned to love me. And so all it was is that I just learned how to take a problem and do something with it. Because a problem in this particular society that we're in, it may be a problem, but I'm not going to let it reign as a problem for me. So the thing is, is that if you're in a situation and you don't like your circumstances and you wish your situation was better, you know, if I had those circumstances, I'd be rolling too. You wouldn't. You don't know what you do. If I had that kind of money, you would have spent it long ago. Ugh. So your assignment on earth is simply the problem you were created to solve. So I was born black. So I'm created to be beautiful and black. Amen? Christine is born to be beautiful and white. She's born to be beautiful and Indian. And I was also born to appreciate her ethnicity. I was born to appreciate her ethnicity. Not to fight one another. That's of the devil for us to be sitting up fighting one another over skin tone, over thick lips, over, over all this other kind of stuff. It takes faith way out of the equation. God can't do nothing with that. Are you hearing me? So when we hear these presidential elections and all this other kind of stuff, and you hear a man say, look at my black person over there. I ain't mad at Donald Trump. It's just, I'm not, and honestly, I'm not mad at him. But when you're around that, that's all you know. I used to work with people like that. I used to be that black person. <laughs> look, look at it, wasn't I? Yeah, I would go there, look, 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 look at my, look, look, he's a great family man, look at my Negro right here. 
See, people don't like to hear that, but that, I mean, and I don't care what y'all think. That, I, I was in corporate America, and that's, and I was the token one. I would, I wouldn't, we go places. People don't like hearing this stuff, man. It became, watch this, watch this. And, and then, and then, because, but then if I get a little, one time when I got threatening, that's when I got a problem. When I grew my hair out and got my beard going on and dressed in all black, then all of a sudden I knew, see, I knew. I knew we shouldn't have. Your problem on earth is simply your assignment God has given you grace to complete. So if I have a problem with mathematics, I don't give up. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Just because I, I don't want to hear black kids say I'm not good at math. Who told you that? I'm not good at engineering. Are you hearing me? Yeah, yeah, just because you think you're not, you keep saying it, you will have what you say. It's nothing but a problem. What is it? It's a problem. Your problem on earth is simply your assignment God has given you grace to complete. It does not, it does not give you credence to give up. What is it going to take? Faith. And in faith, it's going to take time and work. Yeah, patience. <laughs> I don't like this faith. It's too much work. Exactly. <laughs> are you, but are, are you hearing me? Yeah, and I'm talking in personality defects we have. You got to work on them things. Somebody say personality defects. <laughs> Can you look at your neighbor to say you have one? We all have personality defects. The more you talk to somebody, the more you discover, like, oh, <laughs> there it is. I, I like them. You ever been out with somebody and you're like, I like them, but. <laughs> what your faith needs. Agreement. What does faith, what does faith need? Integrity. I think I'm going to stop on this one, okay? Faith needs what? Proverbs says the righteous man walks in his integrity. The righteous man walks in what? But it also says walk by faith. So as I'm walking by faith, I've got to also be walking in my what? The reward of integrity is self-confidence. Ooh, I love this. <laughs> you know, pastor, he's all, you know, he's just too much sometimes. No, I'm very confident. Now, when I'm not confident, is when I don't think things, I'm doing the right thing. That's when I'm kind of sheepish. If I'm doing the right thing, you can't shut me up, because I don't care what you think, I don't care what you say. I know I'm doing what, I, what God told me to do, and as long as I know that, then I'm okay. Are you hearing me? Watch this. Faith does not work in lies, even if you think it's the truth. Oh, I'm walking by faith. You a lie. The Bible says, let every man be a lie and let God be in truth. So then you think what you think, you think is true. This is my truth. But your truth to God is a lie. Thus, you don't walk in faith. And then you're wondering why things are not. See, some of you are like, well, things are good enough because I'm living just as good as uh, John and Bob. But God says, I wanted you to live on the level of Brad and Ken. You're living beneath your level. Because you're going by your own truth instead of the truth, just like the faith, right? And when you go by the truth, then you'll start to see some different results in your life. On your own effort, you've done this. So what, what would happen if you gave God your life? Integrity is awesome. Because all it is is truth. I love integrity. Just do the right thing, the right time. Don't lie, don't cheat, don't circumvent. Just do the right thing. Now we gotta define what's right. He tells me what's right, I do what's right. But too many people have taken what's right and they flipped it to be what's wrong. And so then you see people out, which is insane to me, under God's word to be sitting up hating people and shooting people in clinics and that kind of stuff. That is not of God. 
God is not of God, God, God or to go out and shoot folks just so you can, because this is what God's word said. You are a maniac. I need to quit saying this because folks be trying to hit me back and say stuff to me that I don't know. So, you know, don't be, don't be, don't be hey, just edit this out. Amen. <laughs> it's scary when you get out there a little bit. People are crazy out there. But I'm just trying to get you as we are, uh, my departing words to you. What does your faith need? Your faith needs integrity. Faith, and, and, and don't forget this, faith does not work in lies. So you will not have to be, but when, when you are in truth, faith always works. When? Always. And when faith works, you can feel it, you can see it, it is evident, it is clear. Even if you think it is the truth, though, you could be thinking something is the truth, it could be the lie, it could be a lie. There's a lot of people who try to pull out what they want to hear from the word instead of what it actually says. And so you can say, I'm stepping out on faith to get this house, or I'm stepping out on faith to get this husband, or I'm stepping out on faith. Where is your word? You can misconstrue the word. People have done it through millennia. That's why a lot of folks don't want to come to church no more, because people messing up the words from this book. Are you hearing me? So it could be a lie, and there would be no faith in it at all. But if it is the truth, then you'll see God. How do you know the world conquerors walks in truth? we're still here this makes no sense what we do every week it makes no sense I mean I don't want to think about it good I don't because I like I like you know I, I like numbers and I like common sense and I like I like I like to know and this makes no sense and yet people show up here every week we do it by what by faith we show up we try to love on people by faith. We show up. You know, how many, you know how many churches? I know of seven pastors that died last year. You know how many churches just failed last year? I think 1,300 churches failed last year. And by the grace of God, someone will say, well, God is with that church because they're just blowing up. I don't, I'm not looking to the left or the right. I'm trying to do what God told me to do. And I just thank God because we have been integral. We've done what we said that we're going to do. And people's lives are changing in this place. And it's to God be the glory. Come back next week, amen.